This lens right here may look small, but it's an absolute beast at taking Milky Way and night sky photos. This is my favorite budget astrophotography lens, and it can do it all. Blue hour blends, Milky Way, even night sky time lapses. And the best part about it is that it's not gonna cost you thousands of dollars. Now, I do a lot of astrophotography workshops, helping beginners start their journey into taking photos of the night sky. And the most common question I get asked is, what lens should I buy? And most of them don't have a lens made for astrophotography. A lot of them have either kit lenses or long focal length lenses. And those are fine too for astrophotography. But when I get asked this question, 100% of the time, I'm gonna be recommending this lens here. This is the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 manual focus lens. And at the time I bought it, it was like 350 bucks or something like that. I've owned this lens for about five years now and I absolutely love it. It's still going strong. It works wonders for me. Now, currently I use it with my Fujifilm X-T4, but I've used it with all of the other Fujifilm cameras that I've used in the past, including the X-T1 and the X-T20. Now the Fujifilm X-T4 is a crop sensor, so it's the APS-C sensor. So when I pair it with the 12 millimeter lens, the full frame equivalent is an 18 millimeter lens, just to give you a perspective if you're a full frame shooter. They make this lens for other camera types too, like Canon and Sony, but I'm a Fujifilm shooter, so <laughs> this is the model that I use, but you can definitely get ones for other camera models as well. Just like any piece of equipment, there are plenty of pros and cons, and I wanna discuss those. But before we get into that, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Stargazer, the clothing brand that makes these clothes and these hats. They're super high quality clothing for anyone who loves space, for all of you night owls out there. So check out their clothing at www.wearstargazer.com. All right, let's get into the positives about this particular lens. Now I've been using this lens, like I said, for five years and I've put it through the ringer, all different types of weather, snow, desert, high wind, cold, hot temperatures, all of that, and it's lasted this long and still going strong. So that's a huge plus for this lens. It's also an F2 lens, so it's super, super fast, gets lots of light in, all of that faint Milky Way light, so it's great for those single shot Milky Way photos. It also has a range from F2 to F22, so if you need to stop down for whatever reason, that's no problem at all. And since it's 12 millimeters, you get tons of sky and tons of foreground, and you have a lot of room to play with when creating your compositions for your night sky photos or your time lapses. Plus, the wide field of view makes for great blue hour blend compositions. This lens also does an exceptional job when you pair it with a star tracker. So putting my camera and this lens on a star tracker creates amazing photos because I can do longer exposures and I can drop the ISO and drop the f-stop number so I can get good sharp stars and low noise, increasing that signal to noise, meaning I can get exceptional detail on the Milky Way. And when I use my tracker, I take tons of photos, and so I stack them afterwards in post-processing to get the absolute best signal to noise, meaning I can get the absolute best detail out of all of those images that I took. This lens paired with a star tracker gives insane results. And you can buy this combo of the lens and the tracker for less than some of those premium lenses on the market today. So if you're looking to save some money but really wanna get good results for your wide field Milky Way photos and wanna do tracked images, this is an excellent combo for you. And in addition to all that, it does a great job at doing night sky time lapses. Of course, this is a budget lens and it's not flawless. So there are some cons to consider when looking at this lens. But keep in mind, you're not spending thousands of dollars or even a thousand dollars on this lens. First, the performance on the edges of the field of view when you have the aperture wide open at f2 is not that great. But to overcome that, if you're pairing this with a tracker, you can always step down the f number to make sure you get those sharp stars in the corners. This lens also does suffer from vignetting, but some people don't mind that. I don't mind that as well. And there's a lot of post-processing techniques to take care of that issue. One of the hardest things for beginners getting into astrophotography is focusing on the stars and getting them pinpoint and sharp. Now this lens does have an infinity focus setting, which is supposed to help you focus on the stars, which are considered infinitely 
far away, but I've found that the infinity focus setting doesn't actually bring the stars into focus. They're slightly out of focus. And what I found with this particular lens is you have to slightly go just behind the infinity focus or just go just before that infinity focus setting on here to actually get the stars sharp. Now to ensure that you actually have sharp stars, there's a couple of things you can do. You can manually zoom in on stars and make them as tiny as possible in your viewfinder or LCD view. And that's when you know you're in focus. There are other tools to help as well, such as a Batnoff mask or a focusing lens. And since we're talking about focus, one of the benefits I actually forgot to mention is that this lens holds focus really, really well. I've had this running for hours and hours with different temperature conditions and changing temperature conditions, and it still managed to hold focus through all of that, especially uh, doing that through time lapses. Now, a lot of other lenses, even some of the more expensive lenses, I found actually drift in and out of focus, whether it's because the focusing ring is sagging and you have the weight of the lens coming down on it, or it just has a hard time with changing temperatures. So that is a huge plus for this lens. So there you have it. This little lens packs a punch and I highly, highly recommend it to anyone wanting to get into astrophotography looking for a lens. You always want a wide field, fast lens when shooting things like the Milky Way or Nightscapes. And this is gonna do that for you and it's gonna perform really, really well and it's not gonna break the bank, which is the best part about it. So yeah, that's it. I just wanted to make this quick little video about this lens that I absolutely love. Hopefully it helps you out. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment. I'm happy to help out. Clear skies, everybody.